Hello and welcome back again to another amazing episode. My name is Hayford. If it's your first time and you don't know who I am, I'm a content creator, a cinematographer, and this is the Diaspora Transition episode. On this episode, we interview people who moved back from the diaspora and currently are here in Ghana and doing great things. So if it's something you're interested in, yeah, stay tuned. So today we have an awesome woman who moved from the USA and is currently here in Ghana. She's on the show today. She goes by the name Zaina Adamu. Without further ado, welcome on the show. Hi there. Wow, thank, thank you, you so, so much. much. Thank you for having me. I'm honored to be here. <laughs> really? I appreciate you even honoring my invitation. Absolutely. Anytime. Wow. wow. You are here. I can't believe it. <laughs> I'm here. Beautiful Accra. Mm -hmm. Beautiful day. Mm -hmm. Not too hot. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Wow. So why Ghana? Well, um, that's a very good question. Mm. Uh, so I'm a first generation American. My wow. parents moved um, from Ghana to the US in the 80s. They mm. moved to New York City. Um, not the greatest part of New York City, but they knew that um, the United States was a place where you can build a better life. And yeah, it was the American dream was how they sold it to us. And so my parents, they left. They left Ghana. They moved to the U.S. I was born in the 80s. Wow. And I was born and raised in New York City. Wow. Um, and so New York City made me. It's who I am. It's a part of who I am. And then um, I... Should I tell you the story? The Everything. Story? Okay, I'll just tell you a brief rundown. Because so, New York people are watching right now. Most of, of the Americans watching are from New yeah, York. Yeah, shout out to New York City. Um, I'm from Yonkers. Okay. Um, so I'm from Yonkers, New York, born and raised there. Mm -hmm. um, ended up going to college in Maryland. Was the first person in my um, family to go to college. Wow. Uh, wow. I decided that I wanted to get into a career of journalism, which is similar to the work that you're doing. I've we'll always get been, into that. Yeah. She, I, she had, wait, her portfolio <laughs> would blow your mind. Okay, continue, I'm sorry. No, it's okay. I've always been fascinated um, with stories wow. and the stories of people mm. and so i thought you know i can get paid to just ask people questions and and i already know how to write so it's just a combination of those things so i started off as a reporter um, at, a, at a local newspaper in maryland the baltimore times mm. i was mm. young i was 23 years old i didn't know what i was doing mm. but i did it mm. and i did it well wow. um this was in 2009 um right when there was a huge global crisis there was a financial recession and the newspaper industry she was dying and so um, I was told the owner of the newspaper brings me to our office and she says you know you've been great but we don't need you anymore we can't afford you wow. and she let go um, some of her staff I was one of them oh, wow. and so I thought why don't I make the transition to TV to television and so I, I knocked on CNN's door and wow. CNN is a huge um, global brand yeah. not one that i thought that i had what it took to get into mm -hmm. um but i knocked on their door mm -hmm. and i applied and i applied and applied four applications later they call me for an interview wow so you know i moved from maryland to atlanta the global headquarters is there i, wow. I interviewed i got the job and wow. i was there for six years wow. um some of the best six years of my life I, I met heads of states, I've met um, huge politicians, influencers, celebrities, dignitaries. It was such a phenomenal job. It is. And then one day, I was sitting in my living room. It mm -hmm. was a Saturday afternoon. I never forget this day. It was the last Saturday of September in 2017. Mm. And I was sitting in my living room just like this. And I had an epiphany. Mm. And a voice came down and said, Zena, move to Ghana. Wow. I don't know what that voice will, I learned, well, we'll talk about that more, about, we were talking about energy, energy and energy. Vibrations, vibrations, but something in my heart told me to go back home. Wow. And two months later, I bought a one-way ticket. I reduced all of my life's possessions into three suitcases, wow. resigned from my job, huge job. It is huge. And moved here. And moved wow. Here. Yeah, that's my story. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> CNN. And yeah, you said, um, I'm quitting. I can't believe this. You know when you have a voice inside of you, have yeah. you had that feeling? Yeah. It doesn't happen often. Mm -hmm. It happens maybe three or four times mm -hmm. in your lifetime mm -hmm. where something in your, in your gut just tells you to do something. You don't have a plan. You don't know what you're going to do, but you just know that this is something that is bigger than me. It's wow. a calling bigger than me. And that wow. was one of those moments. Wow. Yeah. Now walk us through how it felt like when you stepped foot on the continent. Well, uh, before I get to what it felt like when I stepped, I have mm. to say mm. the weeks leading up to the move were terrifying. 
I lost, oh my God, I lost um, like eight pounds in like a week. Yeah, I, I wasn't eating. Too much. Yeah, I was scared. Oh, wow. It's scary. Because of what you've seen on the news or what? No, it's, I'm uprooting my life. Okay. I had a very good life. Mm -hmm. I was making a great salary. Yes. I had a great social mm -hmm. life. I had my family was there. Mm -hmm. um, I had, I lived in a really nice part of wow. town. And I was doing well. Behind. And I was leaving all of this behind to start something new, and I didn't know what exactly that was, you know? Yeah, I would feel the same way. Yeah. Wow. So I had an anxiety attack, actually. I had a layover at the airport, and I was literally yeah. like, can I do this? And I called my mom, and my mother said, um, Ajia, that's what they call me. She says, if you don't want to do this, come back home. And I remember thinking to myself, well, if I come back home, what am I going to tell everyone? I had a going away party. And so I kind of let, like, that pushed me, you know? Yeah. Um, but what did they even say, though, your friends and family, when you told them, listen, I'm quitting my job, I'm working in CNN, and I'm quitting my job, I'm going in the middle of Africa. Yeah. I'm leaving everything behind, I'm yeah. leaving. What did your family and friends say to you? Though? Surprisingly, 90% of them were like, you have my full support. Okay. You're going to do great out there. Okay. This is something that you should do. Um, they knew and I knew that I needed a transition in my life mm. and, and I needed something new. And mm. then there was a couple of people who said, are you, you're kidding me? What mm -hmm. are you going to do there? Mm. Are you crazy? Mm -hmm. And it was that 10%. That was the one that was the one that pushed me. Yeah, not the people oh, that supported wow. me. Wow. It was the ones who said, you're not going to survive there in one year. Those were the ones where I was like, I have to prove a point. Yeah. And you are here. I'm here four years later. Wow. So yeah. how long have you been in Ghana so far? Four years. Four years. And yeah. you're still standing. I'm still standing. <laughs> <laughs> how are you adapted? You know what I always tell people, you never fully adapt mm. to Ghana. Mm -hmm. It's always like something new that you learn. Mm -hmm. um, but I say if you can survive the first year, you'll be fine. Mm -hmm. And so the first year was just full of just great experiences, being in new culture, a new environment, meeting new people. Um, it was the best decision that I ever made. And um, I don't regret moving to Ghana, not wow. one minute. Yeah, what, does, what does Ghana mean to you? When someone say you hear the name Ghana, what does it mean to you? Freedom. Freedom. Peace of mind. Wow. Um, happiness, joy, wow. love. Wow. Ghana is an incredible place. Because you didn't choose to go anywhere else. No. There's 55 countries in Africa. Yeah. But you chose Ghana. Yeah. But you know, also, like, if, if you go back to the beginning of my story, mm -hmm. I'm Ghanaian. My, mm -hmm. my mother and my father are Ghanaian. Also, did just, that influence it? Absolutely. <laughs> okay. You know, okay. uh, all of my family besides my mother and my father and my two sisters are in, are here. And so moving here connected me to my bloodline, my ancestry. I learned so much. Do you know how bizarre it is to <laughs> see someone you've never met before who looks just like, like you? Like you, it's like, I know you. Yeah, you the same like mannerisms. And it's like, wow, like, I would have never experienced that. So did you trace I your know. root? The best that I could. Mm -hmm. I, I have a very, um, my, my bloodline is very complex. We come from many different places. Mm -hmm. I have Togolese in me, mm -hmm. there's mm -hmm. Mali in me. Mm -hmm. um, my father was telling me there's Saudi somewhere wow. down the line. So it's very complex. But as far as I could, yes, I did like trace the steps to see who are my grandparents, what did they do, my great grandparents. And, you know, I got to like my great great grandparents. Wow. And That's I, very interesting. Then the story gets, yeah. Yeah, it is wow. interesting. Will you say you are comfortable in Ghana? 100 percent really yeah i had a um i would say at the two-year mark i had mm -hmm. an itch to go back home yeah um and i want to also talk about your experience because you yeah. did the international thing too maybe i did too, and yeah. i had the itch to go back home and so i went back home and i just remember like mm -hmm. within a day or two i was ready to come back to ghana mm. there's something about this place that just pulls you back and I no can't matter explain. how because i i hmm, imagine very hot afternoon yeah under the shower yeah taking a shower turn it on and then the water just cut off <laughs> now you have to look for a bucket and then fetch some water and have to use spill yeah and you say you went back to the u.s and you came back again <laughs> yeah that's a true reality i remember i was getting ready to go out like it was a huge event it was a saturday night yeah. and i just got out the shower and i played some music and i'm getting ready to like do my hair and my makeup mm -hmm lights off wow yeah lights wow. off this is typical guy it's true and listen it's a reality wow but um a generator can fix that no mm -hmm. i know not everyone can have if you it can afford generator. it yeah if you can afford a generator or polytank mm -hmm. you know i understand that that that's a reality but mm -hmm. i don't 
I don't look at it that way. I see the beauty of, mm -hmm. of Ghana. It's just a part so, of the experience. So if it's you should okay. go back in time, you yeah. are a day before you made that decision to resign. Yeah. If you are asked, do you want to do it? Will you still pre press the button? A day you, before? Yeah, you've wow. made that decision. That's a great question. Will you still say yes? Let's go That's to That's a really great question that no one's ever asked me. Yeah. Uh, yeah, you're really good. He's really good. Um, <laughs> You know, I don't think I would have. Mm. No. Really? It was something about that moment on that Saturday afternoon in September. Wow. If you had asked me 24 hours earlier, I would have said, what? No mm -hmm. way. I'm mm -hmm. not leaving. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Wow. It's interesting to think Very about interesting. it. I'm enjoying this conversation. <laughs> now, we, we even didn't ask a lot about you. You said it yourself, your portfolio and everything. Mm -hmm. But, you know, for people out there who don't know who you are, you said a lot. But yeah. your portfolio is amazing, you know. Thank Can you, you tell us from, you know, Baltimore, uh, the Baltimore Times, CNN, yeah. tell us, you know, some of the things you've done in journalism. Yes. And then based on that, I'll ask you some few questions. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, I always, for anyone young who's watching, who's trying to figure out what to do with their life, I always say, do what you want, what mm -hmm. you love to do. Don't mm -hmm. do what the money is, right? Mm -hmm. So when I was in um, college, they say university here, um, I started off doing political science. And I... As much as I enjoyed, I always had a, um, an, an interest in policy and politics. Mm -hmm. I don't know if it was something that, at that time, what I wanted to do with my life. Mm -hmm. And so I remember I called my parents mm -hmm. um, one day and I said, Mommy, Daddy, I'm changing my major from political science to English. Mm -hmm. And they go, what? what? We're paying for you to get a degree in a language you already mm -hmm. know? But I was like, no, I enjoy writing and mm -hmm. reading. And, you know, that was the beginning of my journey. It was from there that I learned about journalism and what that meant. And it was a cool opportunity to meet cool people. Yeah. Um, and that was when I discovered that I could actually write. Mm -hmm. And that led me to work for the school newspaper. Um, went from a contributing writer to a, a, a staff writer to an, a news editor within a year. Yeah. That told me something, that I had something. How did you achieve so many in a very short period of time? And also, you went to Harvard. I did. I just graduated <laughs> from Harvard. Yeah, that was an incredible Guys, experience. Guys, if you too. don't know Harvard, just go and check. <laughs> this is crazy. Uh, you know what it is? It's just a um, beyond um, just, you just have to have the will. Mm. You, your mind has You're to just strong, say that yeah. you can do it. Mm -hmm. you know? Because you said you were the first person and to my, do this in your family. Yeah. What kind of mindset were you having to be able to defy everything? And even being a woman in America, black woman, as a matter of fact, Absolutely. and achieving great heights yeah. where nobody in your family has ever done that. I have to give credit to my, my mother and my father. Okay. Shout they out. were the ones who, yes, they, they moved did. to America for us. Mm. You know, I'm not going to get emotional. <laughs> They're um, probably, I wanted to ask you. Yeah. They supported you, right? When you said, I'm coming back. Absolutely. Because 1, I can imagine, percent. they imagined a future where you had beautiful future mm -hmm. in the u.s mm -hmm. right mm -hmm. and you said oh i'm leaving this behind i want to go back back to where you guys came from yeah yeah how yeah how did they feel yeah you know like yeah. but our dream was to see you in the u.s to be doing this which you achieved you know you were working in the best work ever and then you said i'm leaving sure yeah i think um at the age i was 33 when i made that decision i knew i in my mind, I did everything that I needed to do at that time. Okay. And so when I told, I told my father first, I called him first immediately, and I, and I said, Daddy, this is a decision that I want to make. And he said, oh, you're going to be great. He didn't take me serious. He, really? he, yeah, I could tell. He was like, oh, yeah, go. Go for you it. You're going to be great. Yeah. <laughs> wow. um, and then I called him. Like, I, I said, no, I bought my ticket. I'm really doing it. A couple of months later, I, and, and that was when he was like, whoa, you're really hmm. doing this? He and he was like, you yeah, you have my 100% support, whatever wow. I can do to help you. Wow. And my dad actually came around the same time I came, and that was important, I needed that. Um, so yeah, it was good. Wow. I so really you guys came, came to Ghana, did you visit where you, you guys came from? You were together with you? So my father, <laughs> we, again, we come from a very complex, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. and we don't come from a very like, um, we don't come from like a wealthy family. And oh. so, you know, <clears throat> we come from like the Newtown area. Mm -hmm. And so my father um, did a very good job of exposing me to that 
that side. Yeah. And to this day, every time I drive through Newtown, I always look around. I'm like, wow, wow. like yeah. of all these people, why, why, yeah. why, why was it my family? Mm -hmm. And it and it made me so appreciative, but also made me realize that I need to be here. This is me. This wow. is who I am. Wow. You know? What is the vision? What is the vision? For who? For me? Yeah. For Deciding me to Ghana? leave everything behind. What uh, is the vision? Yeah. Why you came to the continent? What are you doing here business-wise? Speak to me about it. Sure, very good. So I didn't know. <clears throat> I had like a semi-opportunity that kind of fell through, um, which is fine. That's mm. life. But um, I just remembered those first few months. I was like, all right, this didn't, the opportunity that I thought I had didn't work out. What's next? Mm -hmm. I got to keep grinding. Mm -hmm. And I had to start over. So here I was working at CNN and I ended up coming to TV3 as an intern. Oh, wow. Unpaid. Intern. As an intern, unpaid. Can you that, imagine? How does that work? I literally. They don't know your portfolio or what? Well, they didn't. I don't know. I can't speak for them. Okay. But I just remember I walked into TV3. I didn't know anyone there. I walked into TV3 and I said, who is the boss? <laughs> <laughs> and I said, this is who I am. This is what wow. I've done. I want to come to Ghana. I knew that I wanted to come um, to Ghana and help tell the narrative of Ghana and of wow. Africa. Wow. And I knew that um, TV3 is one of the most yeah, well-respected, yeah. one of the biggest. So I literally went to the boss wow. and... Um, Gosh, I don't want to mess up her name, so I won't say. Um, okay. But I don't think she's there anymore. Mm -hmm. But I remember she looked at me, and I, I gave her my CV, and I said, this is what this I've is done. Here. She says, listen, we love you. We'd love to have you, but we can't afford you. Mm -hmm. Do you want to just come and just, you know, yeah. learn more about Ghana mm -hmm. life? I said, sure. Mm -hmm. And so I came. I, that, it was like a Friday afternoon, Monday morning. I came, and I just kind of watched how mm -hmm. um, stories were told in Ghana. And that was the wow. beginning. Yeah, I made wow. great networks there I as can, well. Yeah, so it imagine. was... That's I didn't great. realize it back then, but I needed that. Wow. Yeah. So that was then. Which date was that? Which, this which was in year? 2018. Okay. Okay. Yeah. And then followed by that, you, you worked in. Uh, I saw um, GH. Is it Ghana News? What oh, is it? Um, GH. <clears throat> GH Web, right? I work, I, I've written for Ghana Web, um, okay. but I worked at Joy FM. Okay. Joy FM is under the multimedia group, which is yes. the biggest media house in the country. Yeah. Um, Joy FM was one of the most phenomenal experiences ever in my life. Mm -hmm. The year that I was at Joy FM made me, shaped me in so many ways. Wow. And the people that I met there are still my family mm. to this day. Wow. Uh, it was a great job. Compared, compared that experience with CNN. <laughs> it was, I don't put one over the other. Okay. CNN was a great experience for me for a reason. Mm -hmm. And Joy FM was a great experience for another reason. Sure. I don't put one over the other. Mm -hmm. They both taught me how to be a good storyteller. Mm -hmm. um, CNN helped me to develop my craft. Um, Joy FM taught me how to, you know, mm -hmm. um, network, how to mm -hmm. how to work under very intense pressure. CNN as well. I mean, it, they all it, it's interrelated, but I just learned two different things, mm -hmm. um, and they're both equally as important okay. in my journey. Okay. Okay. Joy okay. FM was an absolutely phenomenal place, wow. and my boss. Elvis Kwashi, may his soul rest in peace. He passed away um, late last year. Um, he taught me about leadership, about um, soft skills, how to communicate with people. He is the one that transitioned me from being um, um, just a, a worker to a leader. Wow. And I always, and the sun is shining as I say that. I hope he's, he's watching. I wanted to ask you. So I want to speak a little bit on how you got the message that afternoon it was an afternoon where you had it was a message an afternoon, afternoon. Mm -hmm. do you literally heard a voice like i'm speaking to you now or how is it tell me about it because i've had most people saying the same but yeah. i want to understand i felt it i mm. felt it i i you know when i say i heard a voice i didn't physically hear mm -hmm. God, that's mm. what I, I believe in God. And mm. that's something that we can discuss, you know, for whatever. But I didn't physically hear him say, move to Ghana. <laughs> no, he, um, but I felt a very strong, it was an epiphany. It was an epiphany. I felt a very strong um, feeling and energy. Um, we talked about this yeah. off camera um, uh, um, telling me that this is something you have to do. And I really like the point that you made mm -hmm. about mm -hmm. sometimes you're putting those situations um, because you're not in a position where you're happy. Yes. And so, you know, in order to get that happiness mm -hmm. back, yeah. you have to do something yeah, you've never saying, done before. My situation, how yeah. it was when I was in China, yeah. I was working, right? Mm -hmm. And literally it was like the happiness in me was sucked out of it. Mm. I, w I go to job and I feel like I'm a robot. There's no happiness in there. Mm. 
you mm-hmm. know and even the thought of doing things that I was told to do from my spirit makes me happy mm-hmm. you know so literally that was me seeing it oh I was spoken to to you know leave China who do you and that's or what I do you think it. that was that voice honestly things happen like this but I can't really understand it because I don't have a, a religious perspective to sure. look at it from sure, but sure, it's the sure. feeling that I had the sure. energy and everything sure. Sure. Yeah. yeah. The, it really is energy. It's something <clears throat> bigger than us, higher mm-hmm. than us. Mm-hmm. That's kind of directing mm-hmm. us in ways wow. that we can't explain. Yeah, wow. it's very interesting. It's, it's very beautiful. It's good you believe in something, actually. It's yeah. Very good. So, what are you currently working on, business wise? What are you doing here in Ghana? Now? Yeah. Uh, so, uh, I moved to Ghana in 2018. I didn't, I had, like I said earlier, I had something going on. It didn't work out. Worked at Joy FM. That was great. Internet TV3. And then um, I remember uh, earlier I told you about, you know, my family being from Newtown and mm-hmm. how it's really, really rough in that yeah. part of town. And I knew that I could have easily had been one of those um women young women who are brilliant like super smart girls but just don't have access to an education like i had and so what can i do to help these young girls so i started this organization nonprofit called ghana girl rising and yeah we literally just go around um throughout ghana we just speak to children in schools and try to get women young girls to see their potential and to see that there is life for you um, outside of your wildest imagination wow. if you just get an education this is inspirational yeah yeah wow. yeah wow. the world is yours you just need to you know go to school stick with it and so that's what I do and we wow. fund um, uh, through donorships and sponsorships we fund the education for these young girls to go to school and so Amazing. It was great. I loved what I was doing, but I didn't know what I was doing. Mm -hmm. So that was what made me apply to go back to school. So I applied for my master's degree in um, international education policy. um, And I applied. I said, if I want to study, I want to study at the best school. Mm -hmm. Right. And Mm -hmm. so Mm -hmm. I applied um, to Harvard. and no one knows this, but I can say this now. It's okay. fine. I was rejected the first time I applied to Harvard. Yeah, wow. I didn't get in. How many times did you try? I, I tried twice. So twice. the first time I was rejected. Oh, but wow. again, that that I have something in me. If someone tells me no, just Makes like you the temp- try yeah, it's like I have now I have to get in. Yeah. So I applied again a year later and I got in. Wow. And I learned. You're smart. You're a very smart woman. <laughs> Let's um, speak a little bit about education more what does it mean to you and and how do you you see education education is what opens the doors to the the prison of of life Um, education is a key that opens that door out of the prison Mm. yes wow now I say that to say this some people just have an innate talent Mm Um, one of my favorite artists is a man by the name of Sean Carter. He's from Brooklyn. He dropped out of high school. Mm-hmm. They call it um, senior high school here. Okay. Um, but he had a gift to write. Mm-hmm. And he ended up becoming, uh, his rap name is Jay-Z. He ended the, up becoming... I don't even know that his government name. <laughs> I was like, who is this? Jay-Z. He ended up becoming one of the wealthy. He's a billionaire now. He, he came in no formal education, right? Wow. Um, I don't, I don't advocate for you must go to oh, school. I don't point mm-hmm. my finger down. But what I am doing is I'm saying, for those of you who want it, come to me and I'll help. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But if you think, if you know that you're a good seamstress and you can make good money doing that, do that. You don't need to, you know, wow. if you want to go to school, you can for that. But if you just have an innate talent, go for it. I don't have any special talent. I needed to go to school. <laughs> <laughs> I had to go to school. Wow. And so, um, yeah. And I'm so, very touched when you said you said about the, um, you told me about the charity work you've done. Yeah. If the diasporans are watching, people out there are watching you. Yeah. They are touched. They yeah. want to help, yeah. you know, raise funds or even send you support for these children so they will be able to get education yeah. what do they have to do is there any uh, way they can donate or even contact i don't know how is there a way that you Very can good. go about it i don't like asking for money mm. i like time mm. so what i say is if you come to ghana mm-hmm. please reach out to us mm-hmm. go to ghana girl okay. i'll send you the details okay. ghana girl and and send me a message send us a message and let's coordinate when you come back home Let's give back. Let's okay. go to the communities. Mm-hmm. Let's speak with the young girls. Wow. Let's do that. Wow. That's what I want. And bring wow. books. We like books. 
um, box? clothing, okay. books to okay. read, okay. Books. electronics. Okay. If you have used iPads, iPhones you're not using, bring that. Okay. Yeah, just bring yourself and bring your time and your intention. Wow. Yeah. Now, education is very powerful. Now, her story is very inspirational. She literally came from a family where no one has ever been to the university. She got the access and now she's blessing people so they could be able to go to school. And you, you work for the biggest organization. Imagine someone following your footstep or even people you are sponsoring, the education becoming like you. That would and they be awesome. would be the first in their families. That's if yeah. you want to be part of this, donate. I don't know. Just go to the website. You see everything. And just follow it, okay? Don't disappoint me. Thank you. So let's continue. I wanted to... Thanks for the plug. <clears throat> oh, it's fine. So you've been here in Ghana. Mm -hmm. Have you ever been to the Cape Coast Dungeons? Yes. You have? Yes. Can you walk us through the first, the emotional experience when you stepped foot yes. there? The first time I went, I was 16 years old. My father and I, again, wow. my father keeps on coming into the story. Oh, uh, my father and I came mm -hmm. to Ghana um, and he took me there mm -hmm. to Almina. And um, um, maybe I was too young to understand what was, happening. what was happening. And so I went, I took it for what it was. I left, I came back when I moved back in 2018. It's a life-changing experience that wow. everyone must experience um, to fully understand what the journey was like as an African. Can you imagine? Mm -hmm. African man, the head of the family, everyone looks up to you. Provides every food, everything. The provider, maybe you are a chief in mm -hmm. your muni municipality, whatever. And to, to have, to be taken away. To be taken away in shackles, thrown on a boat, some distant foreign land. Um, it's sad. sad. And I cried. And wow. families were just ripped apart. Uh, but it, it teaches us that, um, you know, we're strong, we're powerful, um, you know, the African Americans that I know in the United States are some of the most strongest, you know, they persevere, um, they're smart, they're, it's just, mm -hmm. it's an amazing, it's an amazing journey and I really do encourage everyone, if you come to Ghana, if you go nowhere else, you have to go to the Cape Coast and visit and see what, what they went through. Wow, how important is this though for them, the African American especially, to, to move back to Ghana, to really you know, have this you know, close encounter with what their ancestors went through. How important is this? I can't speak for everyone. Mm. And maybe it's not Ghana for you. Mm. Maybe it's Egypt or maybe it's Zimbabwe or maybe for me, what I, what I identified with was my family is here. My family is from here. I'm a first generation American, the first one, you know, um, my parents and everyone before is Guinean. Mm -hmm. So that was my connection. Mm -hmm. But I will say if I never moved here, I wouldn't have had there's so much I wouldn't have learned about myself. That's true. And so I always encourage members of the diaspora to come home. Mm -hmm. And we welcome you here. Yeah. We love seeing mm -hmm. them here. Mm -hmm. yes? yes? Us. Us. Yes. It's all, uh, we're all the same. Yes. You know? And they become um, very much enlightened when they come here. You can see it. They glow. Mm -hmm. I just visited, one of my friends just visited me just several weeks ago. Mm -hmm. From the U.S.? From the U.S., okay. first time in Africa, wow. you know, first time in Ghana, and they just, they look at things differently. They see things differently, and they go back home, and they're never the same, wow. for the better. Wow. So you that have to beautiful. come. That is beautiful. You have to come if you're watching this. And but you have to also, eat the fufu the, uh, and the jollo. What is your favorite food? I love fufu. <laughs> fufu and with what? Light soup? Light soup with one um, piece of meat and then one um, chicken. Finally. One Finally. cow meat, one chicken. Finally. With ginger, I agree small. with you. Food <laughs> is the best small. Ghanaian local dish. I love it. I have it every Sunday. It's my friends and I, we go to the living room in East Legon. Wow. And we, we eat fufu and I we mean, have a great time. I've been trying to tell these people that fufu is the best you know, local dish here so in Ghana. Good. Someone said Banku and Oko. Banku, nah. Yeah, Banku you know what I'm saying? Good. Banku is good, don't get me wrong. Nah. But if you want some authentic Ghanaian, mm -hmm. you need fufu. fufu. Come to Ghana and eat fufu. What about Not meat fufu. <laughs> no, 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 no. The original, the original one you found. Pounds. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But I want to ask you this. You said they should come home. But I met an, an African-American mm -hmm. somewhere in China. Mm. And he said he's not from Africa. Mm. Mm. What you do you see? have to say to those who think like this? 
it's very sensitive topic. I don't want to, mm. I don't, I can't tell you how you identify. Mm. That's not my job. Mm -hmm. If you don't identify, mm -hmm. you don't. But why? Because they've seen so many, you know, discriminations, so many uh, propagandas on TV, right? Yes. Where I would feel like they are ashamed of to associate themselves with Africa. Really? Yeah, yeah. Because I think, okay, when, we, when I was growing up in mm. the U.S., yes, it, it was not cool to be African. No, it wasn't, no. you know. And <laughs> I had this conversation with a friend the other day, like, mm -hmm. he's African. He moved here. Um, he moved to the U.S. And I remember he was saying to himself that he would lie and tell people he was Jamaican. I was like, <laughs> what? You know, but it wasn't cool. Now it's like Afrobeats yeah. and, you know, it's like this, this, it's this phenomenon, it's this movement. Mm -hmm. and, and it saddens me to hear someone say, someone who's African-American to say they don't, they're not from Africa. It, it goes to show you that part of this transatlantic slave trade um, really, really permeated the mindset and the thinking, yeah. um, which is, I think, what the, the people who removed these people from the land, that's what they wanted. Yeah. And so they they've it. achieved when they hear mm -hmm. stuff like that. The, the answer, those people, not... I have to be careful with my wording because, you know, I have friends of all different races mm -hmm. and I, you know, I know that they're great people, mm -hmm. but I, there, there's a small group of people who at that time, you know, who are of a certain race, took um, us from our homes and mm -hmm. moved us and, and they've kind of just lost that yeah. they're from here, you know? Yeah. But what about those who are convinced they want to move back? What would be like the third best advice for them before Three? they step? Yeah. You know, people move back without research and sometimes they come and they couldn't okay. survive, they yes. had to leave. Yeah, yeah, know? not so, everyone survives, yes. Yeah. So if, if someone is, is, is interested in moving, what would be the best theory advice for them? Visit first. Don't be silly like me and just move. <laughs> <laughs> but no, I visited many times before, before I... You move. Yeah, yeah, so I, I visited and I knew mm -hmm. this is something I want to do. Mm -hmm. um, but if you've never come, please visit first. Mm -hmm. Number two. Um, there's beauty in everything. My philosophy is that there's beauty in everything. Mm -hmm. And so please remember that when you do decide to come, you're coming here, but Ghana is an emerging market. We're a developing country. And so you're not going to have a lot of, or some of the leisures mm -hmm. that you have in the U.S. Be mindful of that. But know that there's beauty in all of that. Okay? And if you can survive here, you, you, uh, living here has taught me that there's nothing I can't do. Yeah. And so it's a test to yourself. Mm -hmm. Can you... And then the third piece of advice is, um, when in Rome, do as the Romans, yes? So um, don't come to Ghana with this mentality of, you know, oh, this is not how we do it in, mm -hmm. in America. You're not in America, no. you're in Ghana. Mm -hmm. So you have to do it the way the Ghanaians yeah. do, or you go back. But then people complain that they are too laid back. Ghanaians are too laid back. That's their culture. Yeah. And? But they said it impedes growth and development. What do you have to say about that? Example, uh, an estimated time to finish a building was one year, sure. but due to, okay, today, tomorrow, today, tomorrow, sure. it's, it's completed in two, three years. Sure. So sure. business was not able to start sure. delaying everything. Sure. What do you have to say about that? It's a cultural thing. Mm -hmm. I do think what I do love about the diaspora coming is that um, I have friends who are business owners who are working with the locals and teaching them, mm -hmm. you know, you can work efficiently and get things mm -hmm. done. And, you know, they're taking that knowledge and they're, you know, creating their own businesses, you know, um, which is important. Mm -hmm. um, and so, okay, if you see something's wrong, come and help and try and fix it. That's what I did okay. when it comes to female education. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I can't do everything, but I'm doing my part. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, if you see that, you know, Guyanese are too laid back or this is not right or that, come and, 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 and what can you do to help? Don't just sit and complain. It's true. Sitting yeah. on the sidelines isn't going to help. Wow. Get on the court and, and start shooting mm. wow. with the other players. Yes. <laughs> Take this advice, it will come in very handy. Now, I know it can't be all roses. It can't be all sunshines and rainbows. Ghana is amazing. We love it. But what would you say has been the greatest challenges you've faced so far since you moved back? It's mm. a very good question. Mm. Your greatest. <laughs> I, like I said earlier, I, you know, I'm, I'm an optimist and some people say that's not realistic, mm -hmm. um, but I really do see um, the beauty even in what's not perfect. So, okay. okay, when I first moved to Ghana, I lived on this rough road mm -hmm. um, in Hacho. Hacho. And 
I remember it was a rough road. I come from the U.S. where everything is concrete yes. and paved. And I remember I would walk up and down this rough road every day. And I remember thinking to myself, you know, let me let me put it to you this way. Yeah. So it would rain, and when it rains, there'd be, you know, have mud you ever been on a, it would be very road, muddy, yeah. and then like I'd get mud all over mm -hmm. my shoes and everything mm -hmm. like that. And I remember thinking, wow, this is super inconvenient. Mm -hmm. And why did I decide to leave what I had mm -hmm. for this? Mm -hmm. And then I realized, I looked at the, one day I was looking at the dirt road, and I saw, you know, this is earth. Yes. I'm, I'm, I'm walking on earth. actual earth. Yeah, yeah, yeah. right? Yeah. Um, in the U.S., everything is manufactured and man-made and concrete and brick. Mm -hmm. And everything is just mm -hmm. so, like, brown and gray. Mm -hmm. And here, it's like, it's life. It's, nature. It's nature. It's beautiful. Oh, Trees, flowers. <laughs> sunshine, the breeze. You know, that rough road was so symbolic of my mm. journey here. Wow. It, it's not perfect here, wow. but it's real and it felt real. Well, I like that you said it in the, in a positive light yeah. since you're optimistic. Yeah. But my tire just got busted because of one of these. <laughs> no, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's the reality. That's the reality. But you fixed it, right? Mm -hmm. And you made it here safely, yeah. right? All right. It's beautiful. It worked out. Do you think it's possible to make it here in Ghana? Absolutely. Really? Absolutely. So the Africans saying it's not possible when they have to go to the US, UK before they make it. Oh, what yes. advice do you have? For I, I thought you meant for like diasporans coming. I mean diasporans, anybody, because the diaspora sees the light, mm -hmm. right? And they preach to the Ghanaians here that it's possible to make it here. Yes. But you have to understand that we've, we've gone through moments where the West me Western media mm -hmm. has preached to us that the, the dreamland is the US, UK, and other European countries. Okay. And you can't make it until you go to these countries. Yes. So yes. this is what we have it in yes. mind. So let me, let me answer that question from the perspective of a local, okay. because I do understand that unemployment is a, is a it, it runs here. rampant here. Mm -hmm. And I don't blame anyone for saying, listen, I can't find work here. Mm -hmm. There's this place called America where mm -hmm. you can find work. Mm -hmm. I'm going to go. I'm yeah. going to try and go. I don't blame them for that. I don't blame them mm -hmm. for that. And this is when it gets to, we need to, I don't want to get political here, okay. but we need to hold our governments accountable, you know, yeah. because there's money in Accra. Mm -hmm. Um, Accra is one of the um, most richest cities. Richest and expensive cities. One of the richest and one of the most expensive cities on this continent. Mm -hmm. So there's money here. And, you know, when locals come to me, you know, people with master's degrees who are selling, you know, Brodo on the roadside. Wow. Come on. Yeah. You know, yeah. that has to be fixed. And so when they go and say, I'm going to go to the U.S. and U.K., I, can I can I blame them? Mm -hmm. I think what saddens me is when we have really big talent, mm -hmm. doctors, lawyers, and the like, who you know they have a talent and they leave, and then what's left for for mm -hmm. Ghana? Mm -hmm. You know. Uh, wow. So it's good. I like your answer. I like your answer. Now let me ask you this: You've you've been here for almost four years. You've mm -hmm. you've seen businesses growing from from the start. Mm -hmm. Even diasporans who came in and, and you know created some business. Mm -hmm. You've seen how successful it is. You saw some fail, right? If you are to give best business ideas to diasporans moving back and to invest in this kind of business, mm -hmm. what would that business be? Patience. Patience? Patience. Okay. Yes. Um, to start a business is hard. Mm. To start a business in a developing country is mm. hard, hard. Mm -hmm. If you're starting a business to make quick money, forget about it. Okay. Just quit now. Okay. That's not why you start a business. The business has to be starting because of something bigger than yourself. Okay. In what way am I, am I serving mm -hmm. the people mm -hmm. that I'm mm -hmm. serving, right? Mm -hmm. Yes. Um, and so, you know, so A, patience. Mm -hmm. B, patience. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, and then... C is going to be patience. <laughs> yeah, but, you know, I would say power through. Because in those moments when you want to give up, um, um, those are the moments when you have to keep pushing, mm -hmm. you know, a mm -hmm. good friend of mine asked me, is it all worth it? Mm -hmm. You know, very, very successful business. I want to um, ask you too. Yeah, and you is can. Is it worth it? Absolutely it's worth it. Really? And my response when my friend asked me this, is, is what I'm doing worth it? I said, yeah, so if you quit now, then what? What mm -hmm. are you going to do? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You start from nothing? Yeah. Gwen Ado, you know Gwen Ado, she's the owner of Hair Center. Um, she was like a, uh, she had a course at her shop in East Legon. Mm -hmm. She was a huge, um, big woman at Stan Big Bank, or one of those banks. And she left her job to start her business, selling hair. And everyone told her, there's no way you're going to make money selling, selling hair. hair. 
Is it Chris Hill? Uh, Gwen Ado okay. is her name. And the name of the business is Hair Center. You know, that woman makes a lot of money mm -hmm. selling hair. Mm -hmm. Really nice shop in East Lake mm -hmm. um, I think she, she makes like, I don't know how much money. She, she makes a lot of money selling hair. Yeah, but she believed in it. And she said something I'll never forget in the course. She said, the first five years of starting a business are the hardest. Mm -hmm. The third year is the worst. Wow. So if you can survive those first five years, you're off to, to a good mm. path. So they give up even before five years? Do you think yeah, they have to try give up. again? Some do give up. I've, I've met a couple of people who came to the continent and they didn't survive. Because they, they, their lifestyle was not able to, it was not sustainable. I mean, when you move back, the US dollars is what quite What do you heavy. mean by that, by sustainable? Example, trying to do everything they were doing in the US, living the same lifestyle, living in very luxury places thinking Ghana is cheap or Accra is cheap, mm. right? So they end up trying to maintain the same standard of living, the standard they had in the U.S., sure. and then not having a job that brings in the same amount Income. of money yeah. in the U.S. dollars, yeah. you, run, you run out of money quickly. Yeah. And even if you're investing and you don't see returns in a period of time, right. your, your plans begin to change. Absolutely. You, you have to be adaptable to survive in Ghana. Now, mm -hmm. all of the leisures and luxuries that you want in the U.S., mm -hmm. here you can find. Mm -hmm. But you have to be making the money. I mean, that's just common sense, isn't it? Um, and so, you know, you have to have a certain level of grit and determination. Mm -hmm. Like, I want this, I'm going to do this. Mm -hmm. And in, in those in instances, it doesn't matter if you're living in a shack, mm -hmm. you're going to keep pushing and you're going to make it. Wow. You are an inspiration. Let's say someone so is you. watching, young women on the continent mm -hmm. are watching you. They've seen your portfolio, CNN, the biggest media houses in the whole and cut across the globe. Your portfolio is amazing. What you're doing for women and children on the continent, education, they want to be like you. What advice would you say to them? I always say um, you have to. Um, it's like my journey is my journey, so mm -hmm. it's really hard for me to. Mm -hmm. But I say you have to um, know what you want and just be moved by it. Like, Figure out what it is that your calling is in life, and that alone will push you into, into rooms that you never thought possible. Mm -hmm. It's by simply just having the will and the de determination and the grit and the passion. And like the thing that keeps you up at night, you're so excited about, mm -hmm. pursue that, mm -hmm. pursue that, mm -hmm. pursue that, and wow. be consistent. And those little, little steps that you're taking will one day become a big thing and you'll look and be like wow all wow. of that hard work was worth it beautiful now <laughs> that's a very good advice now you can't come on the show without me having to ask you <laughs> about relationship <laughs> you've been here for four years have you tried some Ghanaian chocolate what do you mean Five. Ghanaian chocolate yeah you know no. Ghana is like one of the largest mm -hmm. exporters of cocoa okay. and I absolutely love okay yeah I love the chocolate here it's okay. very nice yeah. so which type did you try um I like the raw one like from the actual cocoa okay. plant yeah okay. I think those are actually <laughs> I mean this pretty. Ghanaian chocolate have you tried this one <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but are you dating though <laughs> are you dating here in Ghana or um, have you tried dating yeah, I have. Okay. I have dated. Um, I think Guyanian men are awesome. Um, mm. Very nice guys. Yeah. Oh, wow. I think Guyanian men are like, um, they're super loyal wow. and they're, they're very, they love taking care of, um, they love, they just love wow. caring and taking care and wow. making sure you're protected inside. And I like it. Yeah. Wow. And they're, they're very calm, which I mm. like as well. Mm -hmm. And it's been really fun. Mm -hmm. Yeah. They're, it's, it's. <laughs> You'll be the is... only person who agrees with me on the show about Ghana being oh, the most faithful. Why do most people say? <laughs> I have no idea. People well, have bad experiences. Listen, there's good and bad everywhere, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. Like there's good and bad mm -hmm. in Nigeria, mm -hmm. in South Africa, everywhere. in US, UK, China, wherever. Everywhere. But I just, I don't know, I attract people who are just genuinely good people. Yeah, like I attract good, good people. And I like, like that. the when I, the dates that I've been on have been like just incredible. Amazing. And I'm still friends with wow. many of them. Yeah. Rate, rate Ghanaian men, just to have a number for the, for the guy. On a scale of one to what? One to ten. Ghanaian men are a ten. A ten. Oh my God. <laughs> I'm so happy. <laughs> Wow. Absolutely. Attempt. Really? Yes. I like them. Are you sure you're not just saying for the camera though? No. No? Yeah, for real? I really like them. I wow. really, really like them. Incredible. 
They're incredible. I love them. I'm going to put your number <laughs> or your, your Instagram. If you're watching Don't this. Don't put my Instagram on. <laughs> they're going to DM you. Just, just, just say hi. Okay. You know, I'm going to leave her Instagram. Just shoot your shot. You know, that. Are you what? Single, right? Uh, I'm kind of in a situation. Oh, uh, okay, yeah. It's, it's in my book. It's it's single. Situationship <laughs> is single. Okay, shoot your shot. Okay, that is very funny though. Do you see yourself settling down here in Ghana, getting married and having kids? The world is um, is so large. It's mm -hmm. a really hard question. I think no matter where I end up in the world, Ghana, will, I'll always come back. Mm -hmm. But I can't say for sure. Um, that I'm just gonna be here mm -hmm. forever because mm. there's so much more exploring. In Africa, you want to go? Yeah, Africa and Where beyond. Where in Africa? I've always wanted to visit. Um, can you believe I, Lagos? I don't know why Lagos, I'm so fascinated. Nigeria. I, yeah, I'm so fascinated by Lagos, and everyone hmm. has their stories about Lagos. I want to go. Yeah. Abidjan. Abidjan. Um, all of the Francophone countries along okay. the coast. You um, speak French? Dakar, no. Okay. You should, you should not. Oh. No? Yeah. That's she just like spoke French. That's all I can say. Um, no, the way you spoke it, you know how to speak French. I want to learn. I took a course and then I forgot it when I moved here. Yeah, but I used no. to study yeah. French. Um, yeah, you know, I want to visit um, all over um, Eastern Africa, Kenya. Um, I hear it's beautiful. Um, Ethiopia, Namibia. I wanted to visit Morocco. So many. Okay. So what would you say has been? One thing you really love about Ghana since you moved back. One thing. Um, I love being. People here are happy. Mm. There's, there's not much here, but mm. and when I say much, it's all relative, right? Um, it's not like people are happy here, um, and it's because um, <clears throat> I was watching an interview. Someone asked Barack Obama, like when he was a president, like it was a young child asked him, like, how are you so happy all the time? And like, everyone kind of hates you and mm. everyone talks bad about you. And he said, I think it's because I was born by the water. I'm from the water. And there's something very special about um, driving past the Atlantic Ocean every mm -hmm. day when I'm coming into town. There's something very powerful and serene about it. Mm -hmm. So I think that's um, my, the thing that I love most is the happiness mm -hmm. and the freedom. The that peace. I feel the peace. I feel okay. peace here. Yeah. Wow. This is very interesting conversation. I love. I love. I love speaking with you. I really enjoyed it. I appreciate you coming on the show. Thank you if so you have much for message, having me. <laughs> thank you. If you have a message for those watching, it could be advice. It could be anything. What would that message be? I always tell people my biggest philosophy is that. Um, life is so short, so listen to what your heart is telling you, whatever it is, whether it's in a personal situation, your professional life, find something that moves you, that you want to do, and pursue that, and give it 100%, um, and don't think too hard, and just get up and go. So thank you very much for watching. If it's your first time, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. Now, I will leave her social medias everything on the screen and in this description go check her out she's amazing she's doing great here on the content and yeah thank you so much for being on the show thank you for having me this yeah. was fun it was fun yeah i, I enjoyed myself wow <laughs> so yeah subscribe and yeah peace out Bye bye